Hey, 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 welcome back to PLA for you. It's Leroy again, and today we are gonna go through 2022 paper 2, question 1, and the topic is on financial statements. Now, financial statements is a topic that will be tested every year, whether it's a limited company, which is what we're gonna do today, or a sole proprietor. But the concepts are super important and super useful. Now, it's actually also very easy, so I'm going to walk you through certain tricks and tips and that will be hopefully helpful for you. Now, if you think you have a friend who can benefit from this video, please share it with them. It's a free resource for everybody. And if you have any questions to ask, feel free to reach out to me, either via the channel or via my email address at qa for you at gmail.com. Well, without further ado, without further ado let's, let's see what we have today. All right, all right, let's see what we got here. So this is a limited company, uh, LMN Private Limited. You can see here, and that's an indication. It's a limited company, not a sole proprietor. So the format of this uh, output, which is the financial statements, the statement of financial performance and statement of financial position will be that of a limited company format. Now, there are three key steps as you approach this question that you have to do even before trying to plot the uh, statement of financial position and uh, performance. So I'm going to go through them right now. So first, if you look at this trial balance, this trial balance is a mixture of uh, items that belongs to the financial state statement of financial position as well as statement of financial performance. We're going to split that. right? At the end of the statement, it says prepare a statement of financial performance for part A and statement for financial position for part B. So anything that uh, in the trial balance that relates to the finance, statement of financial performance, we will call it A. Anything that relates to statement of financial position, we'll call it B. Okay, so let's go through that, right? As a first step. So fixtures and fifty things, that's a, a non-current asset, so it's B. And this whole thing, uh, motor vehicles, same uh, accumulated depreciation for motor vehicles and fixtures and fittings, these are all B items, which is the items for the statement of financial position. And sales revenue is a statement of financial performance item. So that's A, including sales returns, cost of sales. Those, so these three items, I'm going to mark them as A. Then inventory is a current asset. So it's a B item, and I'm going to mark this as B. And then commission income, that's a statement of financial performance item because that's a other income item. So I'm going to mark this as A along with wages, expense, uh, wages and salaries, utilities, all these are expenses until rent and rates, which are all expenses. Then we go to trade receivables and payables. These are all statement of financial per, uh, position items um, as these are assets, current assets, current liabilities. Allowance for impairment of trade receivables. This is usually deducted from trade receivables. So that also belongs to the statement of financial uh, position. Cash at bank, issued share capital and retained earnings. These two last two items are all equity items. So I'm going to all mark them as statement of oops uh, financial position items. Okay, that's the first step. Very simple. Now let's go to the next step. Step two. Step two. For each of these additional information, do a journal entry for them, right? So let's uh, try them out. So uh, the first one is fixtures and fittings are to be depreciated at 10% using straight line method, assuming scrap value of 30,000. So the cost of the fixtures and fittings is 270 and the scrap value is 30. So the first step before getting this number, we'd have to take 270, you less off 30,000 and gives you the remaining value, right? Then you take that remaining value, you multiply by 10%, which is the annual depreciation rate at a straight line basis, and that would give you your annual depreciation. So if the question tells you that there's a scrap value for the asset, then the depreciation has to be uh, uh, calculated on uh, based on the cost less scrap value multiplied by 10%. If there's no scrap value, then you just take you just simply take 270 times 10% instead. And the journal entries are debit depreciation, uh, which is an expense item, and credit accumulated depreciation, which is a um, uh, item that you see in the statement of financial position. Okay. Um, now, the next one is uh, motor vehicles depreciated at 30% using reducing balance method. So let's see what we have here. 
So the journal entry is the same as the first one for fixtures and fittings, um, but the calculation is different because this is reducing method balance, uh, reducing balance method. So um, the cost of the motor vehicle is 125,000. Now, for reducing balance method, before you calculate the depreciation for the year, you have to take 125,000, which is the cost, you minus the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year, which they have given you is 63,750. So after that, you take the remaining amount and you apply 30%, which is the uh, depreciation rate um, to the, this, this balancing number. Okay, so that will get you 18,375. Now, uh, as of the last day of the year, this year, this 31st of August is the last day of the year because the year financial ended is on the 31st of August 2022. So it says that uh, commission income of 1,200 had been received in advance. So when you look at this list, it has a commission income here of 28,200. It said that out of this 28,200, 1,200 were actually received in advance. So you cannot consider this entire 28,200 as your commission income for the financial year. So what you have to do is, um, this is the journal entry that I put together and I'll explain it to you why. Um, commission income is an income item and income items are credit in nature. And when something is credit in nature, to record something to, to, to increase the balance of commission income, you credit it. And to reduce the balance of commission income, you debit it. So now in this case, we have over received, uh, we have received in excess of uh, commission income in excess of 1,200 for the financial year. And that doesn't belong to the income for the year. So you have to bring the income down for the year and you debit commission income of 1,002 and you credit commission income, uh, co commission received in advance. And this is a liability account. Essentially what you're saying is out of the 28,200 that you receive, you are, say, uh, you are transferring 1,200 from this account, commission income account to a receive in advance account, to a liability account. And actually, if you take a look at this, the commission income that you receive or, or the commission income that you earn in the period for this year is therefore 28,200 uh, minus 1,200, right? And that's 27,000. So this is essentially what it does. All right, so next, rent and rates, 500 was prepaid. So rent and rates, where are you? Uh, yeah, so you paid 10,750 for the year, but out of which you're saying that 500 was prepaid. So this is um, very similar to the commission income, but this is for an expense item. So let's look at what I prepared as a double entry. Uh, as a double entry, debited rent expense, prepaid rent expense and credited rent and rates. So rent and rates and expense account. Expense account, is it debit or credit nature? It's a debit in nature. So what does that mean? When you want to record uh, a balance, to you want the balance to go up, you would debit the account. And if you want this balance or rent and rate expense account to the balance to go down, you would credit this. And in this case, because this is overstated, 10,750 should be 500 less. So I'm going to credit rent and rates expense account so that it comes 500 and I'm going to debit rent prepaid rent expense, which is an asset account. An asset account is debit in nature. And here I'm saying that, hey, I've got um, additional assets of prepaid rent, right? Uh, and this belongs to me and therefore I'm recognizing it. I'm gonna debit it for $500. Now the next one, wages and salaries 870 were owing. Wages and salaries and expense account similar to rent, uh, but in this case it's not prepaid, it's owing. So when you uh, out of this wage and salary of 63,000, you actually still owe 870 dollars. So your wage and salary expense should be higher by 870 and it, the total amount should be $63,870. So in this case, to do that, to effect that, what you do is you debit wage and salaries of 870 because in an expense account, you want to increase it, so you debit it and you credit a wage and salaries payable, which is a liability account. You want to recognize a liability account, a liability accounts are credit in nature, so you credit this uh, account. 
Now, um, decided that 5% of trade receivables were unlikely to be collectible. So this is essentially asking you to create a allowance for impairment for trade receivables uh, number uh, to update this balance and to update this balance to 5%. Now, 5% of uh, the trade receivables amount of 28,480 is uh, let's say equals to 28,480 multiplied by 5%. We're talking about 1424, okay? And in this account balance, it already has 1050. So to uh, bring this number to 1424, uh, allowance for impairment for trade receivables, it's a credit nature account. Right, so if you want to bring this number from 1050 to 14242, you want to make it higher, so you credit it with the difference and you debit the balance, uh, you debit the account of impairment loss of trade receivables of 374, and this is the difference between 1424 and 1050. Okay. Um, and this impairment loss for trade receivables is an account that goes into the statement of financial position uh, performance. Now, the last one, the company declared a dividend of 10 cents per share. It will be paid on 1st of December 2022. So firstly, it will be paid after the year end. Right? So as at the year end, which is the, the, finan the financial statements that you are preparing, it would be a payable. Right, and at the same time, uh, so firstly, I think you will have to calculate how much is this. So your number of shares is seventy five thousand, and it's ten cents per share, so it becomes seven thousand five hundred. So this is the number. What is the double entry? Let's take a look what I prepared. Um, this will any dividends will reduce your retained earnings. Retained earnings is credit in nature, right? And um when you want to reduce retained earnings therefore you debit retained earnings and at the same time because you declared the dividends you are now in a position where you have to pay them and you would have a payable a payable is a liability account and if you want to recognize a payable then it, uh, you have to credit a dividend payable account right so uh that is the uh step two now if you look at step two i've indicated all these a b a b a b right which means that these are accounts that are new that would go into either the statement of financial performance or statement of financial position uh, i'll show you how i use that later all right now third step third step is to update these final balances so for any accounts here or any accounts in step two that appear uh, uh, that, uh, that appears here you have to update the balances right so let's 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 look at this so uh, depreciation uh, fixtures and fittings you don't have that in this uh, list trial balance so you just indicate an A to tell me all right that's something in the statement of financial performance and accumulated depreciation depreciation fixtures and fittings uh, you have this account here so I'm going to update this balance by saying that hey this number should be uh 48,000 plus 24,000 which is 72,000 and at the same time i will strike off this number here so that i don't get confused okay then uh motor vehicles uh same thing i don't have this uh account depreciation mv in this uh, but i have the accumulated depreciation so i'm going to update this balance here uh and i'm going to update it to 63 750 plus uh 63 750 plus this number 18 7 uh, 375 so that gives me the 82,000 and then commission income i don't have this commission income account here oh, sorry i do have commission income account here so i see it here 28,000 this is something that we updated earlier but as a good practice i'm going to strike off the old balance so that i take the new one here Okay, and commission inc uh, receive in advance is a new account, but this uh, and uh, this account goes to the uh, it's a liability account, and therefore it, it's marked B here for the statement of financial position. Uh, prepaid rent is not here, and I will mark it B to bring it to the statement of financial position later. And rent and rates, do I have rent and rates here? Yes, I have it here. I need a new number, and this number is ten thousand seven hundred and fifty minus 500 which is this number i'll strike off the old number Oops, strike it off properly okay then uh wages and salaries it's um 
wages and salaries where my okay here 63,000 and the new number is plus 870 so 63870 I'll strike the old balance and similarly this uh, impairment loss on trade receivables I don't have this account here but I do have the allowance for impairment of trade receivables account uh, and I'm going to update that balance so I'm going to put it here and I'm going to strike the old one off right it's 1050 plus the 374 retain earnings uh, I've got an old balance here I'm going to put this new one in here which is 991510 the old balance minus 750 dividend payable is not in the trial balance so I'm going to mark it so I can bring it down to the statement of financial position later okay so let's go and take a look at the state the first part uh, prepare a statement of financial performance for the year ended 31st august 2022 so part a financial statement of financial performance this is the format that i prepared a uh, skeleton of this now let's look at all those that we have marked a in the trial balance step one and step two and then bring it into this uh uh, statement of financial performance format uh, statement of financial performance it always starts with sales sales and sales returns so i've plotted that already in here and uh, correspondingly i'm going to mark this as done and done and done right because we brought this in sales revenues less sales returns equals to net sales revenues that's the first line then after that it will be less cost of goods sold so i'm going to take these uh, cost of goods sold out as well and out then after that uh it would be the gross profit that's a calculated balance and it's uh, basically a net sales revenue less uh cost of sales then after that if we have any other income which we do in this case we will add them and this is commission income commission income is uh i'll strike that off we strike this off just now and now the new balance is twenty seven thousand. so i'm going to bring this twenty seven thousand across and i'm going to strike this out as well then uh we're gonna put in all the expense items right so all the expense items will be from wages salaries utilities and rent so these are the three i'm gonna take this i'm gonna just put it in here so i'm gonna mark these three out these were cancelled earlier and then this is out and this is out as well because i've transferred them now to the statement of financial performance nothing from a in the trial balance let's go down to the journal entries i'm going to move my this here now in the journal entries we have depreciation f and f uh, and depreciation motor vehicles so i'm going to put this these two in and i'm going to strike this out strike this out and strike this out and then i'm going to look at any more a's yes there's some a's here impairment loss for trade receivables i'm going to put this in here so i'm going to strike this out now any more a's so no more a's then i have to calculate my total uh total expenses is the sum of all these and my uh residual balance which is the profit for the year is fifty three thousand nine hundred and fifty one which is the gross profit at your commission income less your uh, total expense okay so that's part a very simple once you have done step one two and three uh, let's take a look at step uh, part b part b statement of financial position skeleton is here uh, it starts with assets non-current assets and current assets and then equity and liability with uh, equity first and then current liabilities next so let's see what we have that is belongs to part b here right first we start with the trial balance it always starts with non-current assets right and we know that fixtures and fittings and motor vehicles are two classes of current non-current assets so i'm going to bring them across here and i'm going to put them like this and this is my numbers here uh cost would go into uh cost i would extract it from this number here right and then uh accumulated depreciation i extract it from this number here okay and then the net book value would be the cost less accumulated depreciation same thing for motor vehicles i'll take it from here and then eighty two thousand. i'll take it from my new motor vehicle balance accumulated depreciation here and then this is the uh just one minus the other right and this is the total of these two now current assets so i'm going to strike all this off then current assets inventory i have one inventory here i'm going to put it in first uh okay inventory 42,000 I strike this off I strike this off and then next I have 
is I go down trade receivables. So trade receivables, I'm going to put in uh, first trade receivables out, and after trade receivables, immediately after comes the allowance for impairment for trade receivables, which uh, the balance is. So I'm going to strike this off. It's not one thousand fifty; it's one four two four, which we calculated earlier. So the remaining is twenty seven five uh twenty seven thousand fifty six. Now the next item on the list that is uh, current assets because I, I'm not putting trade payables because that's a liability so I'm just going to leave that for now. Cash at bank, right? So cash at bank is my next current asset. I'm going to put that, strike that off. 11,900. Debit means that it's something that you own. Credit, it means something that you owe and that goes to the liability account, right? But since it's debit here, I'll put it as a current asset. Nothing else belongs to an asset or uh, asset account. So I'm going to go into my uh, step two and see whether there's any B items that belong to the asset account. Uh, B item, yep. They have a B, we have a B item and that's prepaid rent asset. So that will go into my asset account here, $500. And I'm going to strike this off and mark it as done. Okay. Uh, anything else? This is liability because it's credit commission. Uh, credit, this is a payable. So this is a liability and this is a payable as a liability. So nothing for the asset. Asset is done. So I'm going to sum this together and I got the total current asset balance. I take the sum of all these and total assets would be the sum of non-current and current assets. So for equities and liabilities section, the first uh, category is always the equity and equity first item is always share capital. And share capital is just transferring this 150,000 from uh, the trial balance into the statement of financial performance. So I'm going to strike this off. And then um, next item is retained earnings. So in retained earnings, it's a bit more complicated. You take the beginning retained earnings of 9950, you plus profits for the year or less loss for the year, and then you less any dividends that you've declared. So in this case, 99510 is the uh, beginning balance. And then 53950, if you recall, that's the profit for the year. And then you minus 750, which is something that we did here. Uh, to get the updated share capital and that's really the dividend that we declare. So I'm going to strike this off as done, uh, done, right? And this is the number. Now total share equity would be 295961. Uh, Next, current liability. I'm going to move this here so that we can see it better. Current liability, any current liability, anything that we've not uh, crossed out in part b yes trade payables so the first item trade payables are lifted from the trial balance and trade payables is seventeen thousand three hundred. so i'm going to strike this off as well so i'm going to strike this off so trial balance looks like everything we've transferred we've struck off everything yeah so let's go down to the journal entry so step two uh yes we still have commission received in advance that we've not transferred over to the statement of financial position and that's one so i'm going to strike strike this off and then uh wages and salaries payables 870 so i'm going to strike that off as well Boop. and then the last item uh, i believe we have dividends payable uh, and i'm going to make sure then i'm going to transfer that uh, and then I will strike this off. So I just want to make sure everything is striked off. Everything is striked off here. And then we do a final computation. And current liabilities total 26,870. And the total liabilities and equity is 322831, which is equals to your total asset. And that's where you have a, a good confidence that your statement of financial position is correct when it's balanced. It's a good indication, not necessarily um, uh, uh, a, 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 a guarantee that it's correct. Okay, so I hope that this uh, has been helpful for you. Uh, certainly enjoyed uh, making this video and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, if not, good luck and take care.